Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stars and Pearls. I'm so happy that you found your way here. I hope you click like, subscribe, and share, and that you drop a comment in the comment section below. So this video is on the moon in Taurus, went into Taurus as I'm doing this video yesterday on Valentine's Day, and it'll be in Taurus until today. But I'm going to start doing the moon shift videos again that I used to do when I first started this channel. And I would do videos on the energies and the messages that came through um, when the moon shifted and affected our collective emotional cycle. And um, I'll do Aries through to Pisces. Occasionally, I might do a pick a card, but for the most part, I'll just, you know, race through Aries through to Pisces and see what's going on. Or no, you know what? I'm going to do a, a collective and then a pick a card so you can just tap in um, to whichever one you feel drawn and connected to. Okay, so let's get started. And it's going to be a three pile pick a card reading. And um, for that, I hope you close your eyes and take a deep breath in. And whatever number comes up for you, one, two, or three, that is yours. But we're going to start with a collective read for this moon in Taurus energy. And what's coming up? What's happening? What's going on here? Moon and Taurus, please. Moon and Taurus. Moon and Taurus collectively. Collective. For the collective. Moon and Taurus. For the collective. Moon and Taurus. Okay. So the first card that we have here is the Three of Swords. Okay. So there's some kind of a heartbreak that is, you know, some people are experiencing and Valentine's Day may have kicked that off, may have triggered that. It may have been a day where it was, it was kind of softer. Moon and Taurus tends us to want us to connect to something long lasting, connect to something deep, connect to something which has structure, gives a structure and stability, connect to something that is, um, you know, gives us a sense of home, right? <laughs> a sense of home. And, um, so it feels as if some people were disappointed in that. And it, there may have been a disappointment in the overall collective feeling of home, belonging. I just did a video on belonging. I hope you check that out and that you join us in the free webinar that I'll be doing to that topic, which is super important. Um, but there's there's some kind of a heartbreak that seems to be focused in on in this, this moon and Taurus energy here. The second card that shows up is the Eight of Swords, feeling trapped, not knowing how to change it, not knowing how to change things, not knowing how to make things different, not knowing how to, to move out from this experience of constantly being rejected, denied, um, dismissed, not taken seriously, or being taken for granted. And then we have the King of Pentacles, which really you know, connects with the Taurus energy that this video is on. So overall, the King of Pentacles has to do with stability, with groundedness, with, with you know, but also in a masculine way of going about it. This is not the Queen of Pentacles energy. This is a decision maker. This is someone who takes action on his knowledge. This is someone who shares knowledge with others. This is also the sign of the heal, the card of the healer. And um, someone who's, who's able to, to, fundamentally heal things that are at the basis or the root of something. So it feels as if, you know, like the King of Swords is unable to heal by uncovering, by revealing, you know, revealing secrets, um, getting into things in, in through a mind, right? With the mind diving into things. But the King of Pentacles is a healer in the sense that he can heal the very root of the issue and um, heal the root of the tree and have that tree blossom and bloom and and explode again with life and and being able to share that with with a larger group. So it feels as if, you know, it's, it's time to get to the root of this issue, whatever is causing this constant feeling of not belonging, not being accepted, not being seen, not being heard, not being valued, not being um, desired, not being wanted, not being uh, all these things. It's, it's time to get to the root of it and heal it. And the situation, however it's coming up for you, if it's showing up for you, is showing up and it's revealing itself 
so that you can heal it, so you can thank it. You can thank that you're feeling this way, that your response is to feel that way, because ultimately, we both know, you and I, but you can book a session with me and we can dive into it, <laughs> that this feeling that someone else or another situation is generating in you is already there anyways. As a matter of fact, once you become aware of it, because someone has made you aware of it, all you're doing at that moment is agreeing with them. And so the emotion rises of feeling rejected, invalidated, um, pushed away, and so on and so forth. So it feels as if some of you may have gone through a some kind of a disappointment or a heartbreak that is allowing you to now finally heal that aspect of your awareness and why it stays in that consciousness once and for all. What else is coming up for the collective, please? What else is coming up for the collective in this moon and Taurus energy? This moon and Taurus energy is it's coming up. We've got the Four of Swords, yeah. And the Four of Swords shows up to me in the reverse. And I, I've turned all the cards around and they keep turning around on their own. So the Four of Swords in the reverse means that, you know what, it's also important not to get stuck, right, in the healing of this or in the healing phase. It's important not to get stuck in focusing on, oh my gosh, this is what's going wrong. This is what's happening. And I'm only working on this, on this, and this. It's important to also live your life, to continue, to explore, to go out there. And sometimes having a different experience is what brings in the healing. So if you had the experience of not being loved and not feeling loved, having someone come into your life through you connecting with them, right? And them giving you that feeling or that experience of being loved, of being cherished, of being valued, will be a healing as well. It's going to allow you to move your awareness from one hurtful consciousness into the awareness of a helpful healing consciousness. So love does heal, right? It does heal. And this is why partnerships are so important, especially for people that have had, you know, childhoods where they maybe didn't have a caretaker where they could connect to deeply on a deep, deep level and feel like they had a bonding with them when they experience that in, in authenticity, right? Authenticity. I'm speaking about authentic love here, not, not all the other simulations, but they experience that. That is healing. That is healing. And so many people that have had certain kind of childhoods are able to create a completely different experience for their children because of the partners that they had as well, helping them heal and helping them move through that experience. So it feels as if, you know, um, the, the thing is here, like if you've been disappointed or felt hurt in the last couple of weeks to months to years, possibly, it's time to now heal that and at the same time, move on from that. It, it, it's We're going to have to step things up. We're moving faster. Things are picking up pace. And of course, they're picking up pace because the vibration is going higher and higher vibrations vibrate. The wave line goes, right? <laughs> so it's, it's um, things are picking up pace. So some things now you're going to have to be doing simultaneously. So what, what's coming up for the collective seems to be that it's time to finally heal also the economic rift, okay? And of course, this is not a today project done in one day where the moon is in Taurus, but there might be topics coming up on the table in the collective that have to do with banking, that have to do with the economy, that have to do with money, that have to do with the distribution of money. There may be humanitarian aid that is being sent to areas that are needing that aid. There may be um, talks about dist redistribution or restructuring or how to support, okay? But that's, what, you know, things are unsticking in that arena and are starting to come together again. And this may be one of the days where important talks or important meetings, important connections are being had or made. So it feels as if, um, yeah, this there's a moving forward energy. And it's almost like I'm also picking up that there's no need to to reinvent the wheel. It's almost like, you know, what's been stuck? Okay, let's leave it stuck there. We don't care anymore. We, we can't untie this Gordian knot. So we're not even going to try. We're just going to move on from it and leave it behind. In what context that is, I'm not quite sure. But there's some kind of a global situation where I'm picking up that this is the attitude or the stance that is going to be taken. 
One last card when it comes to the collective, please. Or two. Okay, fine. We've got the King of Cups here, emotional healing, and the Ace of Wands. It's time to emotionally heal. So the entire world is feeling this right now, right? What we're going to do based on that. But the entire world is feeling it's time to emotionally heal. Like all this stuff that we've been carrying forward, you know, from 3,000 years ago, it's ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. We need to stop and um, just, you know, make a clean slate and start over. And we're quite capable of doing that. And so this feeling is more and more on the rise that something needs to give. Okay. So I hope you chose your number from one, two, or three. And let's have a quick look in to what this energy might bring you. Of course, it's a very, it's a blip in, you know, in time, but at the same time, it's an opportunity. It's a portal. It's a doorway. So where will it lead you if you walk through, if you take this opportunity, if you take this potential, what's going on? Pile number one, pile number two, pile number three. I hope you chose your card. Hope you chose your card. Okay, let's have a look here. Pile number one, you've got the six of cups. So this may be, you know, a couple of days where you feel very nostalgic. You may be yearning for something that is just outside the reach of what you're able to define. Yearning for a feeling, a family, a tribe, a home, a partnership. You may be focused on your friends. You may be focused on reflecting on the past, dredging up old memories that bring you joy. Some of them bring maybe bittersweet or bring you like that tangy kind of pain. Um, it feels as if those it's overall a very mellow energy for you where you're able to connect deeply with people on a soul level as well. You may be having fantastic conversations. You may be having um, deep conversations with people at this time. Your supporting card is the emperor, and this has to do with structures, belonging, <laughs> um structural entities that you may be dealing with so this could be um, any kind of agency or institution on that level but of course it could also be that you are dealing with a partner or a father figure someone who has authority over you there may be some authority issues that come up here um, that need healing some of you may be reflecting on issues that reflect how your father connected with you or you with your father and um, this may be coming up for healing as well but over Overall, with the Six of Cups, it feels like a very healing time for you. It's a time to um, emotionally heal the past and how you respond to authority, how you deal with authority in your life, how you take authority in your life, how you express authority in your life. It's, it's a moment where you can step into that. It's important for you to take authority as well in a specific situation, for you to take the lead, for you to make a decision, for you to step forward, for you to do what needs to be done. And um, that's how things will work out for you. Okay, moving on to pile number two. And you got the seven of coins. So you, pile number two, are in reflection on things that didn't go wrong. You may have been in a heavy mindset for some time, and you may have been weighing yourself down with guilt or with um, feelings of inadequacy or things, you know, I did this wrong or that wrong, or I'm not good enough. Unworthiness issues raises its head. And so again, this is an opportunity. It's a portal. It's a doorway. So you can, you know, really welcome that in and say, thank you for showing me that you're still here. Thank you for revealing yourself to me because now I can dive in and see if what I believe about myself is really true or not. And that's the self-reflection that you're, you know, you have the ability or the possibility to go through because your supporting card pile number two is the sun and it's a healed healthy happy and whole ego this is a healed sense of self this is stepping forward knowing you did the best you could with what you had at a time you know where okay maybe a mistake happened maybe or maybe you could have done better or maybe what have you but you're able to forgive yourself you're able to release that you're able to let that go and you're able to recognize the beauty of who you are anyways okay so it feels as if this is an integral process these two days that you're going through of healing your sense of identity, healing your sense of self. Yes, you will be reflecting on things that didn't work out, things in the past. But if you're able to let go, if you're able to forgive yourself, if you're able to release that, if you're able to say, you know what? 
I did the best I could with what I knew how, and I didn't intend, this was not my intention, or even if it was your intention, I didn't know any better. Um, uh, I've grown from that. Whatever it is, if you're able to do that, you're going to step into the sunshine, okay? Um, I do feel like some of you are living in hotter climes, or you're going to be concerned about the weather or having conversations about the weather. Um, you may be talking about um, the heat. You may be talking about the sun. The sun may be a little bit beware of that. It may be a bit much for you, but otherwise I'm feeling this has to do with your sense of identity and self and um, being confident, moving forward with confidence in spite of what happened in the past. It doesn't matter. So moving forward to those of you that chose number three, what's coming up for you with this moon in Taurus? And for you guys that chose number three, we have death. So something may have come to an end these past two days, um, or you may be feeling, I can't carry on like this. I'm done. I'm over this. I'm, I, I can't, you know, continue going like this. Um, you may be concerned as well about something ending. This may be a time that you're spending somewhere or doing something or something with someone. You may be dealing with Scorpio energies as well. Um, you may be dealing with diving into occult or esoteric topics that look behind the veil in a darker way, okay? So that may be another thing that's coming up for you. But overall, it's a time of transformation. You may be finally figuring out what it is about yourself that you want to transform, need to transform, desire to transform, and you go about doing that. Here we have the Five of Pentacles, and this is indicating to me feeling like those of you that chose number three, you may be having some real concerns around money and finances. Um, feeling like you don't have enough, you don't have what it takes. Uh, this roots in a lack of a self-confidence um, and self-esteem and a sense of belonging keeps coming up these days. Um, must be the moon in Taurus. Taurus does rule, you know, include that, right, in our consciousness. Where do we belong? Um, that sense of home, that sense of rootedness, groundedness, all of that. So those of you that chose number three, I feel like this issue is arising for you to have a deeper look at it, you know, and to to figure out like, where do I belong? Where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? And how do I develop a sense of belonging? How do I create a sense of belonging? Because it's not just the others giving it to you, you know, it's it's you participating, right? You being in a group or a community where you can participate and through that comes a sense of belonging and it feels very isolationist here. So you may have been withdrawing from communities, from others, withdrawing from friends, withdrawing from a friendship, a relationship, a job, something but this is not good don't isolate yourself too much um go out there meet people connect with people share with people and you'll see that everything's going to start working out for you okay all right thank you so much for listening i'm excited to see you guys at the webinar and um, otherwise i'm here for you if you would like to book a session with me the link is in the description box below this video i look forward to working with you i can't wait to see you the offer is still ongoing for until february 29th if you book a session now then you get an equivalent session free of charge that you can book within the next three months and um have a follow-up session or a follow-up reading to see what happened, or you can give this reading to someone you love and care about. Thank you so much for listening and watching you guys. Take care. Bye.